I'm the calculus professor and today we'll be talking about physical applications of the integral. In problem number 39, um, <clears throat> we're going to be working with the fluid force on some plate, in this case a dam, uh, and we're Assuming that the water level is at the top of the dam, we'd like to find the fluid force on the dam. So we've got this water up at the top of this dam pressing on the side, and we'd like to know what is the fluid force on that side. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. Uh, there are lots of different ways to set it up. I'm just going to choose one of them, and I'm going to choose to put the zero of the y-axis at the top of the water and then I'm going to say that the positive y-axis is pointed down. Okay, Like I said, there are different ways to set up this problem. This is one of them. Uh, and then I need to remember what is the equation for fluid force uh, on the side of a dam or on a plate or something of this nature. Uh, well, it is the weight density, rho times g from a to b, times, now this is going to be the length of a strip at depth y. So I'm just going to write that as the length at y, times, if I'm sitting here at a point y, I've got a length across. That's what I'm calling the length at y. This is y. And then I need the depth, d of y, dy. So if I want to find the fluid force, I need to integrate from a to b of the weight density times the length across the shape at y times the depth underwater at y, dy. Okay, so this is going to get the job done for me. Now I just have to fill in the pieces. All right, um, so I can start out by saying this is the integral from some y value to some y value. What are those y values? Well, y starts, this is y equals zero. Down here is y equals, well, I'm 15 underwater, so this is 15. So I start at y equals 0 and I end at y equals 15. So I'm integrating this thing from 0 to 15 of the weight density of water, which is 9800, times the length at y. So if I come back over here and I ask, OK, what do I mean the length at y? Well, I'm saying if I'm y at a point y where this is 0, and this is 15, then how far across the shape is it? Well, the way that I like to do this is I see I'm dealing with a trapezoid, and the length across the trapezoid is a linear relationship with how far down I am on the trapezoid. So I'm just going to think of this relationship between y and the uh, the distance across the trapezoid, which I'll call x, has a linear relationship. Let's just figure out the line. Okay, so what I mean by that is if y is 0, and I'm up here, how far across is it? So if y is 0, how far across do I go on the trapezoid? I go 20. Well, if y is 15, how far is it across the trapezoid? Well, it's 10. So here are two points that go through some line. What is the line that they go through? Let's figure it out really quick. So I can just figure out the slope through those two points is y2, 15, minus y1, 0, over x2, 10, minus x2, 20, which is 15 uh, over negative 10, or if you prefer, this is negative 3 over 2. So that's my slope, and then I need to find the line that goes through that slope. So I'll say that this is uh, y 
minus y1. Uh, I think I'll use this point, the 20, 0 point is my point. So y minus 0 uh, is equal to negative 3 over 2 uh, x minus x0, so minus 20. Okay, solve that thing for, actually I want to solve it for x because what goes in here is a function of y. So let's solve this thing for x. I get that y equals negative 3 over 2x plus, what would it be? Uh, plus 30. Does this look correct? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, so we solve for x and we get y minus 30 is equal to negative 3 over 2x. And now we multiply both sides by negative 2 thirds and we get that negative 2 thirds uh, times y is uh, plus, let's see if I divide this by 3 I get 10 times 2 is 20, so plus 20 equals x. And before I start writing anything in here, let's just test and see if I like it. So if I plug in y is 0, I should get 20. If y is 0, I get 20. If I plug in that y is 15, I better get 10. I plug in 15, I divide by 3, that's 5 times 2 is negative 10, plus 20 is 10. And it's perfect. So I can plug this in for the length uh, at y. It's negative 2 thirds y plus 20. Now I multiply that by the depth at y. Well, I set it up in such a way so that if I'm sitting here at y, how far is it from the top of the water? Well, the top of the water is 0, so the depth at y is y. So I multiply by y dy. And this is the integral that will get the job done for me. Now, I actually need to compute that. So let's erase uh, the work I did to find the length, and then we'll finish this off. So um, I can pull out a constant of 9800, and then I get the integral from 0 to 15 of negative 2 thirds y squared plus 20y dy. Take an antiderivative, I still have my 9800, uh, times Antiderivative here would be negative 2 ninths y cubed plus 10 y squared evaluated from 0 to 15. So we get 9800 um, times. So I've got negative 2 ninths times 15 cubed. And then I get plus 10 times 15 squared. And if I plug in zeros, I get zeros, so that's it. Uh, plug this into a calculator, and you should get an answer. And what you should come out with is something in the neighborhood of 14,700,000. And that is in Newtons. So 14 million seven hundred thousand newtons is how much force the water would be putting on the side of this dam.